And welcome back to KTN News Desk. I'm Michael Karanja. Now, the dairy processing industry is one that perhaps is not is commonly known to most of us, and that because at our breakfast table we never miss a pint of milk at most times. Just to help us decipher what's happening in the industry right now, I'm now joined by Peter Mburu, who's the managing director for Kinangop Dairy. Peter, if you just to start off, the first few four months or uh, three months have been quite dry. How is that affecting the milk processing business right now? I would say most of the processors are facing a difficult time yeah. because they're not able to utilize their capacity and uh, the raw materials that you're getting, or the raw products that you're getting from the farmers yeah. has been uh, really affected because most of our farmers are dependent on the free range. And when you come to free range, it's a uh, weather condition. When the weather is conducive, it's a lot of prior pasture, the animals are able to produce enough. But when the weather goes the other way around, things are really tight for us and for the farmers too. So the market is not sustainable. We are not able to sustain the market as it is today because the products we are getting from the farmers is too retro. And perhaps given that in any given year, the, 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 those times that we do have dry spells, perhaps what as an industry or as a process are you thinking of in terms of just being able to meet those uh, supply challenges that you're currently facing? There are two ways that you can look at this issue. Yeah. First of all, the farmers must be enabled to run away from the weather dependent sort of uh, rearing the animals. And they need to go to the new systems whereby we live by the zero grazing systems where they can rear the animals in very small packages and uh, the production will be high. You realize uh, that when the animals are taken to the grazing areas, they spend a lot of energy looking for the, uh, I mean, trying to graze for the available fodder. But if you put them in zero grazing, which is also expensive to a certain extent, you'll be able to get a lot of maximum benefits from that. And the other thing is farmers must also be enabled yeah. to preserve the little pasture that's there when the conditions are good. And uh, they can use it as sewage that can be used during the dry weather. And this can mitigate the challenge that we are so, facing currently. And we've seen some, a few of your competitors actually upping the prices that they pay uh, farmers when they're bringing milk. Is that something that you've also been forced to go that route in terms of just trying to be able to guarantee yourself supply of raw milk? You realize the demand yeah. and um, supply chains, they all go hand in hand. Yeah. When the products are low, uh, I mean the volumes are low, what do you do? The producer always hikes his prices and you have no choice but join the bad wagon. Yeah. And that one, you cannot run away from it. And I guess the biggest competition for milk processors is this milk hawkers, that uh, hawking of milk that has been there currently. The government has obviously said what it needs to say about uh, putting uh, milk hawking as, a, as an illegal action. But how difficult is it to eradicate milk hawking in this industry? I would rather try to bring an analogy between the milk hawking yeah. and um, these um, street hawking. The street hawkers, rather, you realize the moment you throw them from one street, they go to the other street. And uh, in spite or despite the fact that the consumers realize the dangers yeah. of uh, taking the hooked milk, these two cannot work without it because of the price aspect. And you realize most of our citizens are living on the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. And um, every sharing counts for them. And if they are going to get somebody who can give them uh, the slightest margin, cost-wise, they go to that person in spite of the fact that uh, the dangers are there for the hooked milk. So are you, as, as a processor, as Kinangop, are you trying to work with perhaps with some of these, with these uh, hawkers and trying to at least make sure that what they're giving out to the public is more consumer friendly? I cannot join the hawkers at all <laughs> because <laughs> I have my business to learn. Yeah. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, the Kenya Daily Board is doing a lot. We had this campaign that uh, they has it all and they have tried to educate the public on the dangers of taking the unhawked milk mother than processed milk and the teachers are there everybody can see but when you take processed milk all the benefits are there for you from an industry perspective perhaps how's the kenyan consumption of milk because when it comes to other products we usually see consumption especially of things like coffee tea low, usually low internal co consumption of these products but how, how is it for milk in, as an industry when a baby is born the first fee that the baby takes is the milk for the mother and so milk is the fullest to stay and the milk must be taken by everybody. It's, yeah. very, it's very healthy and um, it has a lot of benefits to the body. So there's no way that you can do it with the milk. Yeah. You have to take it. It's very healthy and um, 
it's there to stay for us. So what, what I'm trying to get is from a consumption point of view, is it something that makes a b good business sense for people in, in terms of what people are consuming and what you're able to put out there? I, I, is, is the demand outstripping the supply that real processes are putting out to the market? Let me just speak. Yeah. The production is very low, and you're not able to meet the demand. The demand is high, and there's, when this uh, campaign was run by the Kenya Dairy Board, many people came on board and they realized there are also benefits of taking milk. Yeah. There's no substitute for milk as we speak today. Yeah. So it's the business that's, a good, that's there to stay and it's going to grow stronger. Right. And just looking at that, uh, we've seen obviously a few companies trying to diversify from just milk, but also the different byproducts of milk, uh, be it uh, powdered milk, ghee, butter, yogurt. Is that something also Kinangop Dairy is really considering in terms of investing and actually pumping out more of the diversified products? We have no choice, but to join the bad wagon, you realize unless you join the others, you are going to fall by the side. And the more products that being in the market, the consumer have a choice. If you have only one product, the consumer cannot have a choice. But we have to spoil the consumers for choice mm. by ensuring that you give them the best products in the market. And uh, we at uh, Kinagop Dairy, we have a slogan saying every day freshness. Uh, this is based on the fact that the milk that we create from the farmers in the morning, that's the milk we process the same same day and reaches the market by 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the evening. And so that's why we pride ourselves by talking about uh, every day freshness. Mm. And we are gearing ourselves, and um, within a year or so, we should be able to come up with other very high-edge products. Are you looking to invest into the business to be able to increase the scope, and how much perhaps are you looking to put into the business to actually meet that demand? As we speak today, last the uh, towards the end of last year, we brought in a new processing line for the ESL milk, that is the traditional flight milk. Yeah. And this one has any borders to reach for the markets, like uh, Ukabani area, the dry areas. We also in Western Kenya, Siaya and even Mobasa. Yeah. And we have to do the best we can in the near future and bring up other high quality products. We have yogurts that are in the market today, which are very, very nutritious and of course of very high quality. And as you mentioned earlier, we have to come in the market and bring up other new products like butter and cheese. This is something that we are working on and if possible, by another one year or two, we'll be there. Well, just as you finish, what's the market scope and what's the need to have a powdered milk in, in ample capacity in Kenya? I cannot give exact figures in this yeah. regard, but I would, pro I would propose that instead of us going for the powdered milk, we should try to empower farmers as much yeah. as possible, enhance their capacities that can produce in a product that can go th run through the year. And if we are able to bring them to a situation where they can give production throughout the year, without them having to rely on the periodical weather, yeah. then we'll be having minor products in the, in the market. And what, is, what this one is going to do yeah. is that we are going to empower the farmer who is at the bottom of the pyramid to get some, feed, uh, to get some uh, returns okay. from this. And if he has some income from the year, you can rest assured the economy of the country is going to grow. All right, thank you very much. That has been Peter Mburu, Managing Director of Kinangop Davis, just pointing a view for us of what is happening in the milk processing industry and how that affects consumers at the consumer level.